Welcome. This tutorial demonstrates how to use the TI-30XS or the TI-30X2S to calculate combinations and permutations. It is really easy on the calculator once you know where to look for these functions. Let's take a look at the calculator more closely. Look for a key on your calculator that says PRB. It should be here. Now press that PRB button and your screen should look like the one pictured here. You can see three choices listed on the screen. The first choice says little n, big P, and little r. So NPR, that's for permutations. The second choice says NCR, that is for combinations. And the third choice shows the symbol for factorial. So you can use that to calculate factorials. OK, let's take a look at how we can use these functions. First, a very brief refresher on what combinations and permutations are. If you need a more comprehensive review, please watch my tutorial on probability. The link is in the description box below this video. So briefly, combinations is a counting rule that allows us to count the number of possible outcomes when we are selecting n objects out of n, little n meaning the sample size, out of big N meaning the population. The formula you might be familiar with looks like this. In this formula, we use big N for population size, and the little n is for the sample size. Now let's take a look at how we can use the calculator to accomplish the same thing. Let's say we want to know how many possible ways or outcomes there are if we want to select three items out of five. If we were to use the combination formula, we would define big N as five, and little n as 3, since the population size is 5, and the sample size is 3. The notation your calculator uses, however, looks like this. Little n, then a big C for the combination, and then a little r. The notation on your calculator is different than what is typically used in a formula. The little n on the calculator is the same as the big N in the formula. That is, the little n on the calculator is the population size. The little r refers to the sample size. So if we are selecting three items from five objects, then r, our sample size, is equal to three. On the calculator, it would look like this. Five, then a c for combination, and then a three. That means out of a population of five, how many different combinations do we get if we select three items? OK, let's do this on the calculator. How many combinations can we get if we select three items out of a total of five objects? So first type in the total number of objects, that's five. Then we press the PRB button, the probability button. And as soon as we do that, we see there are three choices available, permutation, combination, and factorial. To select combinations, which is the second choice, we use the down arrow directional key and move the cursor so that the second choice is highlighted, as you can see here. Then we press Enter to select that choice. And now you can see on the screen 5 NCR and then the blinking cursor. Now the blinking cursor is waiting for you to enter or to key in the value of R, that is the sample size, or the number of objects you're selecting out of a total of five. We are selecting three out of five, so key in the number three. And you can see it here on the screen, but to get the answer, you have to press Enter. And there we have it, the answer is 10. There are 10 possible ways of taking three objects out of five. So what about permutations? When we use the permutation formula, then the order in which we select items matters. So picking A and then B is not the same as picking B and then A. Here you can see the formula for permutation. Now let's say, for example, there are five library books and you can select three to read. How many ways can you select three out of five? Well, in the previous example, order didn't matter, so we found using the combination formula that there were ten different combinations of taking three books out of five. But let's say order does matter. If order matters, then you must use the permutation formula. Book 1, Book 2, Book 3 is not the same as Book 2, Book 3, and Book 1. So we have many more possible outcomes if the order matters. And this is called permutation, when order matters. The notation for permutation on your calculator looks like this. Little n, then a big P for permutation, and then little r. 
So it looks like the combination formula, but instead of a C for combination, we have a P for permutation. So little n is still the population size, and that is 5. And then our sample size is little r, and that is still 3. So the notation on the calculator would look like this, 5, then a p, and then a 3. OK, let's see how this is done on the calculator. I've left my previous example here. So you can see 5, ncr, and 3 gave us an answer of 10. There are 10 different combinations of taking 3 out of 5. Now let's do it for permutation. Key in the number 5. Press the probability key. We see again the three choices. The first choice is permutation. This time we do want to select that, so let's pr press Enter. And now 3 is the sample size, so let's press 3. Okay, so now we have 5, but permutation 3. And when I press Enter, I'll get the answer. And the answer is 60. There are 60 possible ways of taking three objects out of five when the order matters. When the order does not matter, we use the combination formula, and we saw there were 10 possible outcomes. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you learned something.